City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. It's the Sheena Metal Experience with your host, Sheena Metal, only on KGRA Digital Broadcasting. Hi, and welcome to the Sheena Metal Experience. We're here on KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network every Friday at 3 o'clock Pacific time. I'm your host, Sheena Metal. I'm a psychic medium. I'm an interfaith minister. I'm a performing artist. And I'm a 27-year talk radio host here in Los Angeles. And I come to you live from my home in Southern California every single week. This show is about spirituality. It's about creativity. It's about humanity. It's about passion. It's about service. It's about all the things we do to become our best us in this big, beautiful world, and then inspiring others to do the same. And every week on the show, it may be my show, but it's always most definitely your experience. My guest today is a wonderful friend and a fantastic guy that we all grew up with. Uh, When I was a kid, he was sort of the commercial spokesperson kid for things like Underwood Deviled Ham Spread and Dunkin' Donuts. And then everybody knew him for his uh, numerous dozens of appearances on The Mike Douglas Show uh, and his wonderful music that he played. Please welcome to the show my very dear friend Mason Reese is here. How are you, my friend? It's nice to see you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Um, So you're one of those folks that I kind of sought out when I started doing interview radio later in my radio career because as a kid my mother loved you she she used to say my irish mama right that some people had a fairy spirit and she used to say that was when somebody had like just a little bit of skin stretched over a ball of light and when you were a tiny kid and you'd go on the mike douglas show she was was just riveted she said you twinkled and now knowing you as a man and now we've been friends for the better part of 10 years um I agree with her. You, you have a, there's a beautiful, warm, sparkly energy to you. And I think it makes everybody around you smile. And, you. and that's why I'm so proud to call you my friend. That's incredibly kind and gracious of you. Um, I think of myself as a little tiny ball of something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's light or energy or whatever, but um, you know, I, I When I talk about my life and the things that I've accomplished and the things that I've done, one of the things that I'm most proud of is the mail that I, you know, I've received weekly, a lot of fan mail. And so much of it revolved around how happy I made them Mm -hmm. and that I put smiles on their faces. And, you know, I came home from school and my mom had you on the Mike Douglas show and we watched you and you were in our living room and you know things like that and if if i had nothing else that i've ever accomplished in my life that alone is pretty amazing yeah well and i think when a somebody is known for a character we love them but we also love the character right we love cindy brady we love nelly olson but with you because when you see a kid in a commercial you don't think of it as acting especially when you're a kid you think here's a kid that could be living next door to me or could be my my cousin. Somebody just handed him a box of Dunkin' Donuts mm. and he's going to town. And yeah. you see yourself in, why can't I go have a box of Dunkin' Donuts right now? You don't think this is somebody playing a character that's yeah. living a life that I would like to put myself in, but it's a different thing. And then when you see somebody on a talk show, mm-hmm. even if it is an actor you know from something, it's the same thing, right? You suddenly feel like this is a yeah. friend and I'm seeing the real them. So I think yeah. for those of us that were kids, we were like, who is this magic child that is always on the Mike Douglas show playing drums and performing? And and Mike obviously loved you so much. I mean, he he definitely understood the fairy spirit, right? Which is well, the and, highest and compliment. Mike, that Mike was also him. one of those, you know, very typical from strong Irish Catholic background. Right, so he knew know. a fairy spirit. and But not only that, he had been married to, I believe his wife's name was Genevieve mm. for a very long time. And they had three children 
but they were all daughters. Oh, okay. And Mike always kind of wanted a son. Mm. And in a lot of ways, I kind of became like his surrogate son. Mm. He really loved me. And I loved him. Yeah. And there was a love, I think, in general with him. When you watched his show, Absolutely. you could tell that he loved people and he loved his guests. And especially being a kid and loving all the actors that were my age, he was really good with kids. And not all yes. talk hosts are. Some no, talk show hosts have nothing to say to children. But yeah. he would have child actors like co-host with him for a week. Oh, yeah. And, and he was so good with them and he brought out the best in them. And yeah, treated Mike, them like humans. Yeah, Mike was one of those rare hosts that he liked the guest to shine. Yes. Not himself. Yeah. You know? He would set you up for the good moments and he would let you have them. Yeah. Uh, you're right, Sheena. A lot of hosts don't do that. No. And that's what it's about. It's about your guests. Because when your guests look great, you look great. Look, if I throw a party here, if the guests are having fun, then I've thrown a good party. 100%. If I throw a party and I'm having fun and the guests are miserable, then it's it's not a good party. And I remember a guest saying to me once, um, the first time I interviewed her, she said, you know, most of the interviews I do, I seriously could mail them a cardboard cutout and they wouldn't even know yeah. the difference if I was there or not. And um, yeah. I think a good host makes it, the spotlight is on the guests because people get me every week, but they only get you right now. Sure. So you're That's the right. important thing. And it's it's also a good host and I think Mike Douglas knew this too. You're the radio that the stories are filtering through, right? People's stories are coming through you. Sure. And you're just making sure the audience gets the most of them. That's your yeah, job. Absolutely. And Mike was just a, a curious, kind man to begin with, you know? Yeah. And he loved life. And he, I, I really do believe that he, he tried very hard with every guest. Yeah. Of all denominations, of all, you know, different genres, movies, television, music, whatever it may be. I think Mike did a really good job of connecting with all of them. Yes. Yeah. I agree. Which is why he's so likable at 4.30 in the afternoon every right. day. Right. But that's kind of that uh, that spiritual thing that I was talking about, it right? Is. That you, you mentioned much. energy earlier, Mason. And that, now on this show, since my big, you know, coming out of my mom died, I make all my guests talk about spiritual stuff. Mm. But um, he, he, radio and TV and interviewing, it's 100% energy. Your sure. energy is melding with somebody else's energy. It's like playing in a band together, right? Five yeah. people with five different instruments stand on a stage yeah. and it either is beautiful or it's it's a poop show, depending on whether or not the energy melds. And it's the same yeah. thing when you're interviewing somebody, You, a good host knows how to meld their energy with you Absolutely. so that people watching think these are best friends. Like I thought mm. everybody on the Mike Douglas show as a kid, I thought all these people are this man's best friends. Wow. Because that's how he made it seem, you know, and, and to he me, did his job well. that he did his job well. Yeah. yeah. And, and for you, you were like a fearless little person, right? Because you were I had young. No filter. I had no filter. <laughs> you were, he was keeping you on the show oh. with other guests. Kitty, oh. Kitty Crossing. I'm surprised yeah. I haven't had mine yet. And now he's um, gone. Uh, they love the cameras, don't they? They're like, what is it? And why can't well, I stand in front? Yeah, of I've got my laptop set up here and he doesn't know what that is. And he's looking <laughs> up and, you know, he, he's, just, well, listen, he's only a year and a half old. So yeah, he's mine's a, a year and three months. Yeah, yeah, I think they hear your voice and they're like, oh, what's what's going on? What do I need to be well, involved in? You, you know, Shana, because you've known me a long time. Yeah. But he passed away. I'm so sorry, honey. The baby passed away. And your I beautiful really palm. To, say what? Your beautiful Pomeranian. Oh my God, he was so great. And I mean, I came into your studio and he would just sit there and- Yeah, he, we'd he go to really dinner and he'd be with us. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, he really was the best. And right after that, I, I went through a little bit of a mourning period, obviously, mm -hmm. and I still do, even though it's of course. You know, a little over a year later. But I wanted to have a, a furry little warm creature. Right best thing you can do, you know? yeah. And uh, I adopted a cat. Oh. Yeah, he's really, he's really a sweet boy. Yeah. yeah, mine mine is the sweetest boy. I said uh, after Molly passed, I lost my Molly, who you knew in 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 November. She yeah. was eighteen. Ah. I said no more, no more cats until I get my house is fixed up and remodeled and get my life together, and then I'll think about getting a cat. And then uh, we fostered some cats, 
And this little guy was three days old. They were about oh. to euthanize him. He was born on Easter Sunday. He's a little Aries, April 4th. Oh. And I thought, you know what? I'm, Robbie, I'm Robbie just, Rick's birthday. I, right, right. I'm in love with him and I'm going to take him no matter what. And actually being with him helped me to get over Molly's death. Just yeah. like Molly helped me to get over the death of my mom and my Pomeranian who, you know, passed the same day. And so, yeah, I mean, they're magic the way they help. And that's, that's the hard thing I think about people from an energetic perspective is, is animals only know to give back love, right? You give them love and they give it back. That's right. um, if people could just learn how to give like that uh, and how to graciously take and abundantly give, we would all be so much happier than we are. You're, you're, pre you're preaching to the right person when it comes to that. You know, I mean, right, right now, and I don't want to get political. This is not a political show. Sure. But there is so much, and I'll, 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 I'll phrase it your, in your genre. There's so much negative energy in this world yeah. right now. So yeah. much, so much. And honestly, I don't know what we're going to do about it. I really don't. There's so much negativity and bad juju, you know, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And it, it's sad. It really is. Well, it's, it's, we need to find a way. And I thought COVID was going to do it because mm. here, because, you know, I'm the cockeyed optimist, like all areas yeah. for um, here for the first time in our lifetimes, everybody on the earth is dealing with the exact same thing. You know, even world war two, there were places it didn't affect, Sure, but, but the pandemic went everywhere. If you were yeah. alive and you were a human, somebody in your area got COVID. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, I thought that would show us how there was no us and them. There's only we. And we would all have a common enemy to fight, which was a virus. Yeah. And it would bring us closer together. And it did for a while. But then just like yeah. just like 9-11 brought the whole country together for a while. Yeah. Right. For a few and minutes. then we defaulted back to hating each other a couple of years later. It's the same kind of thing. We're back in this whole us and them thing. And it's you have to just live and let live. Right. And you have to. No matter which side of the political spectrum, the spiritual spectrum, the emotional yeah. spectrum you're yeah. on, don't expect everyone else to be you, and don't judge people for who they who they want to be, even if it's something no, it's, you don't like. Okay. The sad thing is, is that when you really break us down as human beings, we have so much more alike than we do different. Yes. You know, we all want the totally. same things. Really, totally. ultimately, we want health and happiness yeah. and prosperity and a good life yeah. and mm -hmm. you know the ability to make choices with your life that's all we really want yes and no matter what side of the aisle you're on we all want that you know yeah, yeah. i don't understand why we can't just hug each other and you know meld you know meld that together i i, I don't i just don't understand it yeah i don't and i don't understand why people are so feel like they have to be so critical and why mm -hmm. um i'll tell you a story that i i told um uh i don't know if i told this on the show last week but i'll, I'll tell a really short version of it yeah. i uh moved into my mom's house right this is the house i grew up in i'm kind of living bare bones while i go through her stuff because i'm planning to remodel it so i don't want to bring all my stuff in and then have to move it all out during the remodel so i have some of my spiritual stuff here but not a lot and i realized that my i still have my house in sherman oaks and i realized that that house has all my stuff. So um, I'm a, an interfaith pastor at a church that's very progressive, but mostly Christian. And mm. I realized I didn't have a Bible. So I was on the next door app, which is where they tell you like where a coyote is and, yeah. and, and who'll come clean your house for cheap. I, I love that one. Somebody was giving away Bibles. And I thought, well, I don't, that would be a nice thing to have in the house right now. I don't have one. So I went to go pick it up and it was at a Mormon temple. Now it wasn't book of Mormon. It was a King James Bible. Mm -hmm. And I went and got him at these two very nice elders who were probably like in high school. And we chit chatted a bit. They gave me this beautiful leather bound Bible. When I told my friends, a lot of people were like, you went to a Mormon church. Do you know what? And all this, you got a Bible and all this like pushback. It's like, wait a minute. I'm, I don't, I'm not hating anybody. And I said to them, look, I would love this Bible. However, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm not an evangelical Christian. I'm not a Mormon and I don't have any urge to become either. However, I respect and love all faiths. And this is something I don't have in my house and I'd love to have one. Mm -hmm. um, and they were great, but it was all my friends that are supposedly, you know, progressive 
mm-hmm. that were like freaking out. Like I was going to get sucked into a sister wife cult because I drove by a Mormon temple in Huntington beach and two teenage kids gave me a Bible, you know, yeah. it's, it just, so now I stay in touch with them because now I have these two fun yeah. little friends and I'm learning a little bit more about Mormonism than I did. I don't have yep. any urge to, to commit. I mean, I dated a Mormon guy and I, I didn't convert, so I don't plan to convert, but, um, you know, wh- why the judging? I mean, it's just, why can't we have a nice exchange without it having to be, you know, this is Orange County. Probably half my neighbors walking up and down the street, walking their dogs, have a very different political views than I have. Mm-hmm. But why can't I just say your dog is beautiful? Why does it have to turn into a discussion about heated topics? Sure. If we keep making everything about the parting of the Red Sea and the line drawn in the middle, we're never going to get along. It's always going to be that line. It's like Hatfields and McCoys, right? Yes. That's exactly and right. You have to get to know someone different than you. I mean, you're living in Florida, so you probably, there's a lot of people down there probably think different than you. Um, the vast majority. Right. But, you know, but I like my neighbors. They're nice yeah. people. I get along with them. Sure. You know, we just obviously don't talk politics. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty much it, you know. But if I go out to a restaurant or a bar and if I'm sitting next to somebody where I live, I have to kind of assume that they don't think the same way I do. Right. And me too down here. Yeah. And, and okay. it's been that way since I was a kid here. Uh, yeah. It's different now because time levels all things a little bit. Sure. But, um, but yeah, it's not all one kind of people as much as it was in 1980. But it's um, still, you know, okay. I don't want to judge people for um, where they worship or how they vote or absolutely not. Just if my opinions might be completely different than theirs, but I'm I'm not going to start judging people because to me, that's just not who I am. I mean, that's, that's not the message that I get from spirit about how we're supposed to all treat each other is not hate everybody. Who's not just like you. Mm. And um, mm. it's about, uh, sh- spreading that kindness, right? Spreading your inner light to people, um, not with conditions. Because if you do it with conditions, then you're not really doing it the right way. I'm going to love everybody, but only the people that are just like me. Then what are you learning and how are you growing, I was right? Say, you'll never learn anything in life being with the one same person all the time. Absolutely. Not happen. Yeah, Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So how are you doing? Because you're down in Florida now. Well, a couple of years. Couple years yeah, almost. I've been here. I've been here just under two years. Okay. Um, as I told you earlier, my mom passed away. So sorry, at sweetheart. The age of ninety-six, which is fantastic. Yeah. And uh, at that point in time, I, I looked at my life in New York City, and I really examined it, and I, I just wanted something different after fifty-five years of living in New York City, and primarily in one neighborhood. Right. Um, it's just time to go. I, I And I promised myself at that point that I was never going to spend another winter in New York City ever again. Yeah. You know, and I found a fantastic condo down in Delray Beach, which I love. It's close to everything I want to do. It's wonderful. And, and I really enjoy it. I really like it. It's simple. Um, it's mine. I own it. Beautiful. You know, that's it. Did you find that when you move to a place that moves slower, because mm. both of us went from me living in the second biggest city in the nation and yeah. you living in the first biggest city in the nation yeah. to living in places that are very beach oriented. Like here, people get up with the sun and they go to bed with the sun and the, the whole lifestyle is very surrounds yeah. Yeah. what's going on in the water, right? Well, well the funny Did thing it, is, Sheena, I, you know, be, being a 55 year diehard New Yorker, <laughs> What when I would come to LA, Hollywood, I found that slow. Yeah. Believe me. I bet. I, I found the service to be unbearingly slow at some yeah. points. Yeah. But you know, when in Rome, you, you do what the Romans do. That's what it is. Right. Right. And now that I'm 57 and getting okay. older, and you know, sure, metabolically slowing down, physically yeah. slowing down a little bit. I love going to the pool. I love going to the hot tub. Yeah. You know, I, that's just, I love that part of my life now. The hot tub is life. It's beautiful. And yeah, 
if I want to go see live music, it's 10 minutes away. Yeah. You know, I have restaurants and shopping and everything right outside my door. I yeah. mean, I'm kind of in the middle of it where I live. But if I want the action and I want to hang out with the younger crowd and hear some good rock music and some right. fun bands, I'm literally a 10 minute drive away. It's wonderful. So I kind of have the best of everything and I really enjoy yeah. it. Did you find when you were living in a smaller place that mm. you suddenly had more time in your head to just kind of, you know, to just sort through some things and figure out what was next and, you know, uh, metaphorically, energetically clean your closets a little bit and figure out well, what yeah. was going on inside of you and, and what was what were your next moves? I mean, Florida has done that for me to some extent. Um, you know, we briefly talked, you know, before we came on the air. Unfortunately, I, I had some health issues. Yeah. I had a couple of surgeries on my leg and I was kind of bedridden for about three months. And that gave me a lot of time mm. to reflect, yeah. to think about what I want to do with my life, sure. to create any new projects, what do I want to do? So in a lot of ways, I'm thankful for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, there's Actually, nothing like that, right? Actually, Sheena, I want to do what you're doing. Oh, great. But not not the same subject matter. Right. But I do but I do want to have a Facebook, Instagram platform, YouTube yeah. live type of platform. You'll where be so I, good at it. Where I could actually do a one on one interview format. So, yeah. you know, we'll we'll see. I'm working on it. Good. When you when you yeah. need a guest that you want to talk about woo woo stuff, you know where I am. Well I'll be your I'll be your woo woo friend to talk about woo woo. And, uh, and you're going to be you, very good at it because you're maybe a natural. You can, maybe you can give me some advice on the technical side of things. Absolutely. You know? Sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm technologically really not too swift. Um, right. You know, uh, all the, the interviewing part and the research I have no problem with. That's the easy right. part for me. The hard part is making it look and sound good. Like your right. producer does. I think yeah, my producer right. is amazing. I'm so fortunate here. But I'm I've also looking, done I'm looking stuff at the where graphics, I'm, I'm looking at everything. Oh, and yeah. It looks beautiful. So. I made that. I'm I'm I mean, Bill's a and genius. Then, he cut the opening. I made this background. I gotta oh, tell wow. you something. I always had to rely on other people to do graphics for me because I'm not yeah. a fine artist. Never had a website because of it. So many people were gonna help and never did. Other people offered to help and then got angry. And yeah. you know, people want to help and then they don't. And so during COVID, um, I didn't know what to do with myself. And I had was, wasn't seeing anybody because there was nobody around. So when yeah. I was started teaching workshops online and Ooh. I would just make my own little graphics on the paint program that comes with windows. Ooh. And oh. then one day I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a website. I had the URL already and I had Sheena Metal Spiritual and I wanted to set up a site for my spiritual practice. And I said, I'm just going to, it's just going to be one page and it's just going to be a links page that shows you where my uh, social media is and how to find me. And that's all it's going to be. And then, and then it was just going to be a links page with a banner. And then it was just going to, and now it's a full blown site. I built the nice. whole thing myself nice. a little bit at a time while, while I binge Netflix in the background. And um, now I no longer fear that. Now I'm going to redo the little bit that was done, set up my own site for my nonprofit, raisingthevibration.org, and uh, do it again and be okay with it. Because And then I got over the fear of graphics. So when, mm. when, when uh, my wonderful program director and producer, Bill Forte, had set up this wonderful opening for me, I thought, well, I got to set up a background that yeah. looks just as good. And so, so I did it. And it was, every time I see it, I'm so proud of it because there was a day when this would have scared me. And the lesson oh, yeah. in this is it doesn't matter if you're 55 like me or 57 like Mason or 77 like somebody else watching. It's never too late to learn sure. how to make your dreams come true and all you need is you. Wow. Thanks to this wonderful thing called the internet. All yeah. we need is, is us, you know, Yeah. to make things happen. And well don't be surprised if I pick your brain a little bit. And you can pick my brain as much as you want. I'm always so proud when one of my guests becomes a host because we need more hosts in the world. We need yeah. more people doing things. We need yeah. more. Um, there needs to be more content on YouTube, you know, more stuff going on and um, more TikTok yeah. videos and more people getting involved and having a voice. It's so important yeah. to have a voice now. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I you've agree. always had such a great one and bring your sparkle. And we all have to have our downtime, mm -hmm. right? To deal with grief, to deal with moving, to deal with relationships beginning and ending to deal with health problems we all have to yeah. take that time but um also um there is also the time for us to let our light shine and i think you're coming just into a time now mm. where you're sort of coming out of this sort of stasis place of healing and coming back into getting your voice out there more i like the sound of that you know i'm ready because it's that's who you are, right? I mean, yeah, you, have you ever been really, really happy when you weren't being a voice for something or sharing your light with someone? Not really. Um, as you know, I owned restaurants and nightclubs and bars for a long sure. time. Same thing, yeah. And it was good. It was good. I enjoyed it. But, you know, the creative spark within me was not really dealt with you know yeah and i don't think i ever lived up the potential of what my head and my heart and my soul really are capable of yeah yeah i mean i made yeah. money doing it it was great had sure. some fun times doing it right but, you know there, there was something about being in front of the camera uh and and working with people directly and yeah and getting the feedback you know the positive feedback is amazing that's one of the things I love doing about the Mike Douglas show was there was a live audience there. Right. And if you said something funny, you got the immediate feedback. Right. Like theater. Yeah. yeah exactly. And right. there's something wonderful about that. Did you ever, as a kid, how little were when you, when you started? Four. Okay. So that's, you know, a lot of people don't remember earlier than four. I do. And you probably do, but a lot of people mm, don't. Not Did really. You, did you, was there ever a time as a kid where you didn't want to do it? Because we hear so many stories, right? Of I was just yeah. so sick of it. And all I wanted was a real life. But you always struck me as like a little kind of vaudevillian kid from another life. Like yeah. you always loved it, huh? Well, look, when you're four years old and you find out very quickly that you can memorize a script backwards and forwards at the age yes. of four. Yes, yes there's something not really normal about that. Right? Yes. Yeah. So when you factor in that and just the normal precociousness, if that's the right, right word, um, you know, and, and then you combine that with my unique look and my unique sound and things like that. Um, it was quite a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I think it's so funny. Our good friend, mutual friend, Alison Arngram, who's ah. been here on the show from Little House on the Prairie. My, my, TV, she always, my TV ex-wife. That's right, your TV ex-wife from your show. Yeah. She always says that um, I'm not really, you're not really one of us because I wasn't technically a child actor. You're not really one of us, but you seem like one of us. And I think it's because, um, you know, I was kind of a, a very path oriented, even as a child with what I wanted to do with my life. Um, I, when I was four, I was also 45. Mm. And um, I'm an only child, as many child actors either are only children or seem like only children. So I'm really good with making my own fun by myself. And I'm the, young, um, I'm the youngest of four. And right, yeah. Uh, did you see them a lot when you were a kid? Yeah, yeah. However, by the time I got to be about eight or seven, they were going off to college. Right. So there, you were first... like an only child, and the fact that there was In a, a lot big of ways, age gap. I was. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. also, um, there was a, I don't know, there's just a, a certain kind of brain that I think a lot of child actors have. Like you said, the four-year-old that can memorize. When I was like three, I memorized all the presidents backwards and forwards of the United States. Wow. There's a certain kind of brain, right? And I always feel so much more comfortable with you all than I do with quote unquote, you know, normal people. I call them like muggle people. Yeah. Um, because there's that giant brain and what did you do with it in a tiny body it's not always a good thing sometimes it's a hard thing to deal with i mean it's when your brain yeah. is moving so fast that you can memorize a script backwards and forwards at four that's a brain you got to keep that brain busy well and and uh, and honestly that's why i really did not do well in school in traditional school wow. i got horrible grades because my brain was just rotating at a you know a faster speed you know, right. and yeah. I tell people all the time, when you're the co-host of the Mike Douglas show and you're the ringmaster for the Barnum and Bailey Circus for a day 
and you're a newscaster on NBC and you get to fly the Goodyear blimp, algebra is pretty damn boring. Right, right. Sorry. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, not it just that you're so bright, because clearly you're so bright, yeah, but also and... that you're, you follow the beat of your own drummer. You, you follow, you, you have your, and you are a drummer, so there's a pun a in there somewhere. You, you follow the, your well, own hold rhythm. On, hold on, hold on. <laughs> that's nice yeah. <laughs> um you know so you i don't think you like being told what to do if it's ridiculous and a lot oh, of school my. was moving at a slow pace right you have to move at this pace because when kids are six this is the pace they move at i remember getting my kindergarten teacher was horrible to me because i could read when i got there yeah. And she looked right at me and said, no kindergartner can read. And I said, but I can read. Like, I didn't know all kids couldn't read. I didn't have brothers and sisters. So she handed me a book and told me to read it for the class with a smirk on her face. And I did. And then she was more mad. But my mom was a teacher. So those yeah. books were being shoved in my face from the time I was alive. So um, I think in school, they expect every kid to be the same. But yeah. you can't expect a child to be the same. When, when that child's not in school, that child's on a set making a movie or doing commercials and dealing with adults and taking all these um, really ex extreme detailed instructions on how to do something, sure. uh, you can't expect that kid to come back and just read a Dick and Jane book and be happy. Yeah, because you're, you're put into a world where everybody's an adult and everybody has adult responsibilities. Yeah. And yeah. now you're one of them. So going to the quote unquote, you know, normal world again, right. not easy to do. I think now though, you know, 50 years later, um, I think it's a lot better now probably than it was. I agree. Uh, yes. I, th I think there are more places for a young, talented individual, whether yeah. it be musically, the ballet, opera, whatever it may be. Sure. I agree. I there are probably more outlets now. Yeah, or learning and schooling than there were back in our day. Yeah. So did you continue to just educate? I mean, not academically, but did you consider to just educate, continue to educate yourself? Because you're a pretty learned guy, like you know about a lot of stuff. Yeah. So you just I, educated I'm, I'm, yourself. I'm not what they call book smart because right. really after high school, I don't think I've read a book, to be very honest with you. Sure. Um, I probably I don't think I've read a book since school, um, but I'm incredibly intelligent. I mean, when right. I was seven years old, I was analyzed with 148 IQ. Sure. So yeah, I was up there. smart, right? Yeah. But right. I think I'm life smart. Yes. I think I'm New York City smart. Right. I think I'm smart because of the people that I surrounded myself with. Mm -hmm. at a young age. And also because my mother and father happened to be really intelligent people. Yes. My yes. father, I believe, was a genius. I, yeah. and I don't use that word lightly. Sure. Um, my father was just one of those kind of people that could talk to anyone about anything. Yeah. And be at home with them and feel very comfortable with them. Yes. Uh, very charming guy, you know. Yeah. It's and a skill. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. It truly is. And I think I got a lot of those attributes from him. Yeah. Um, but my mom was incredibly intelligent too. But again, not book smart. She never went to college. Right. She kind of lived on the beaches of California growing up, you know. Right. Um, you know, San Onofre, San Diego, you know, wherever sure. they've been. Um, I grew up in a surfing family. So um, I'd like to think that there's not a day that goes by where I don't learn something. Yeah. It may not be like the most academic of things. Sure. But I just had a breakup. I had a three and a half year relationship and we just broke up. So sorry, sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the Band-Aid is, you know, still a little. Sure. Little still sore, on there. You, know? you still can see the stuff where it's stuck on. Yeah. I mean, three and a half years is not in, you know, a lot. Not yeah. a minute. It's, it's a while. And, um, but I learned the one thing I know about myself is that I'm I'm also very introspective. Right. I'm, I'm good at looking inside myself and wondering, you know, where did I screw things up? Sure, if, if it's I, so important. Yes, yeah. and a lot of people don't have that ability. 
They're just not good at it. But I happen to be good at it. Right. And I think I learned quite a bit from this breakup. Um, at least I like to think I did. So not in academic terms, but, but in life terms, I yeah. think I'm getting smarter all the time. My mom used to call that coyote smarts. Oh. She said, because, you know, the coyote knows how to adapt to every situation sure. in order to survive. Yeah. 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 And uh, sometimes it's adapting to animals around them, adapting to other members of the pack, um, adapting to food, right? Yeah. Pray for food, yeah. whatever the story is. And I, I think that uh, my mom was also a New Yorker. And I think to survive in New York, you kind of have to have that in order yeah. to survive. Oh. Yeah, and you I'm have to that. stop fighting the natural flow of things, right? And just become one with the city. Yeah. Um, I see that in LA. I see people come to LA and they have this whole attitude like, I'm going to show this town who I am. And, pretty, and they wind up going home on a Greyhound in tears oh, uh, six God. months later. When That's you come to you LA, like all places, but I'll use LA as an example. And New York, the same, because I'm from New Haven, Connecticut. So I grew up in New York. Um, it's it's an animal it's its own energetic animal and you have to adapt to it and to its flow and become a part of it not mm. fight against it in the same way that if you're in a relationship with somebody right a new relationship yeah. you have to learn to energetically meld each other's energy and not try to make the other person be you you know sure. Sure. It's the same thing you can't come to la and make it be you you have yeah. to come to la and be part of la you have to go to new york and adapt to new york Otherwise, you're always crying in a corner somewhere in a fetal position because you're fighting the natural flow of where you are. So your flow now, Mason, in Florida is different than your flow was in New York. And you're still kind of getting your sea legs and learning how to adapt to this flow. 100% correct. Um, yeah, getting to California. A good friend of mine was a, a fairly successful comedian in New York City. Did really well. And he decided to go to L.A. for, you know, what's called pilot season, you know? Sure, yeah. And, man, he got destroyed. And oh, his no. attitude was, you know, I'm from friggin' New York. I know everything. You're right, you know? yeah. I'm a successful dude in New York City. I conquered it, blah, blah, blah. And he went to L.A. and, you know. That right, yeah. Of that, you know. And yeah. it's it's amazing. But, yes. Yes, if you go into a new place with new people in a new city, whatever it may be, yeah, you have to learn how to adapt. You, you have, have to, to learn how you have to learn how to adapt. You're gonna just, be just your like against the wall. When you were a kid, the the Dunkin' Donuts set was different than the Underwood Devil Ham set, was different than the Mike Douglas set. Sure. Every place is a different place <clears> and you have yeah. to learn to adapt. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you can't, you're really not gonna do very well in this business or any and business. That's one of the really. things I think I love about young kids that were performing very young is that adaptability because I think so much of life is that adaptability. If you can figure that out, how to adapt, um, you're in good shape. And so yeah. much of life is learning how to do that I mean, and being every, open to it. Every producer is different. Every director is different. Right. Every yeah. script is going to be different. Every set is going to be different. Yeah. If you only learn how to work in one way yeah. and you have that tunnel vision, no, that's not going to work. What Creatively, and, what have you never done that you, you really want to do? Like what's on your bucket list to wow. do creatively? What do you want to bring to the world? Wow. That's just a small little question, huh, Mason? Just a tiny one for you. Yeah, that, that's 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 a, that's little, a little tiny thing. thing. But that's a good one, though. That's a good one. I mean, as I said, uh, at some point in time in the very near future, I would like to create something like you're doing, but yeah. with my personal concept that I have involved in it. Beautiful. And truthfully, I think I'd be good at it. I really do. That'd be great. And I think I'm going to have good guests. I that agree. Are be entertaining. But well, I'll tell you what it is. It's called okay. Take Two. It's called Take Two. With okay. Nice. The format is basically interviewing former child and current child stars. Beautiful. And people that work in the business, you know, directors, casting producers, whatever, maybe getting their mothers on, you know, on the show too and talking about sure, the family sure. dynamics, whatever it may be. And, but I want the show more than anything to be real. Yeah. 
I want them to open up to me. I want them to be honest with me. Don't bullshit with me. I've been there. I know. You know, right. you're not going to get over on me. So, but I want them to feel comfortable. I want them to know that I've been there. I've done it. I understand where they've been psychologically. I understand yeah. where the baggage may come from and all of those things. So I want it to be an in-depth look into the mind of a child star. I love because that. People love that subject. Not sure why, but they do. <laughs> you know, yeah. people are kind of fascinated with child stars. Yes. But yeah. But so much of it, as you know, Sheena, kind of gets twisted into the negative. Yes. The alcohol, the drugs, you know. Right. Uh, the crime. We the love it. We love a, a car wreck, don't we, as human beings? We love yeah. a car and, wreck. And then what we like to do, and, and again, I don't I don't understand why. But after they fall and crash and burn, we want to put them back up on the pedestal again. Right. And yeah. Then we, but then we want to rip them down from it again. Yeah, it's Humpty Dumpty. I don't understand the, the psyche uh, 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 of the American public. Well, the public. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you an interesting. You... Yeah. I, I, I'll yeah. tell you an interesting thing. I interviewed a bunch of times Kurt Smith, who was in who's in Tears for Fears. Yeah. And he's British, mm -hmm. now living here in the States, okay. in Los Angeles. And he said it's so interesting, the American mentality and the British mentality. In America, they tell you you're never going to make it. But then when you do, they glorify you. Mm. In in Britain, they're extremely encouraging of you to make it, but then when you make it, then they get they want to cut you down because I think ah. you've gotten too big for your britches. So I think we have this thing, right, where we want our stars to be stars, but we also want to see that they're human so we don't feel like they're any better than us. Sure. And it's kind of a strange thing that we do. It's like, like I said, it's like Humpty Dumpty, right? We yeah. break them and put them back together and break them yeah. and put them back together and we root for their success and we root for their failure at the same time. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I want the show to definitely delve in to the serious part. I do. Sure. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about it. I don't want to pussyfoot around it, and you know, of course, yeah. I, I don't want to have kid gloves with them, but at the same time, I want the show to be positive. Yeah. I want people to walk away from the show saying, "Wow, you yeah. know, that, that guy, that guy, that woman, whatever it may be." You know, they've really lived a fascinating life. Yeah, I, I love that. People to know that. And I know that you've interviewed a bunch of us. Over sure, the yeah, a lot of you. And More you know coming. that we yeah. all have stories to tell. We do. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of us have scars to prove it, you know. Sure. Um, me, not as many as most. Because right. I never did get into the alcohol right. and substance abuse. That was not my thing. For me, an Entenmann's donut is like heroin. Oh my God, me too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yes. that's my drug of choice. Food has always yeah. been my drug of choice. Mine too, um, yeah. Just as but, bad though. It's, it's but You look great, it's, by the way. Thank you. Oh, you've thank lost, you. You've lost a considerable I've lost a, amount of I've lost a lot of weight. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have. Thank um, you. Um, I, mean, I, I personally have about 35 pounds and I want to lose. Good um, for you. And I know it's going to take me probably six, eight months to do it, you know? Sure. Um, but that's okay. I'm not in a hurry. Yeah. You know, um, fortunately, my blood work came back recently good. My good. cholesterol level is really good. My blood pressure is under control. So, you know, yeah. I'm I'm starting to kind of rebuild, as you say. Yeah. Almost like the phoenix, you know. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I mean, when, when you lose your mom, all kinds of stuff happens to you. I developed AFib out of the blue the, right really? after she died. And I always say that, like, my heart broke until my heart broke. Uh, and now it's under control. I haven't had an episode in three years. I do take medication, good, but, um, good. but it's, it was a thing that I think happened from the extreme anguish of dealing with my mother's death. So, you know, people always say, clients will say to me, am I ever going to be happy again after someone's death, whether it's a spouse or I say, well, you're going to be happy again, but you're never going to be the same. Oh, no. and that's okay. It's no, the part, it's your next it. part of life. Yeah. Cause she's not coming back. Right. That's it. Right. She's gone. And I was blessed to have 55 years with her. Yeah. And that's so a wonderful. blessing. And I was also blessed to, to have been holding her hand when she passed away. That's wonderful. You know, my mom and I were in I, I was too months. holding mine's hand. Yes. It's, yeah. I'm so glad I was there and I'm so glad I, I held the hand. 
It's I mean, so if important. I showed up, if I showed up at the hospital a half hour later, yeah, you know, I right. wouldn't have had that. So um, I'm very fortunate and very blessed. But in a lot of ways, I, I, I see my move to Florida perhaps as a chance. Now yes. Yeah. To, to recharge the batteries. Yes. To reinvent a little. Yes. So that's it. Well, and there's a healing nature to being near water, right? Uh, salt water is healing. That's why yeah, people... I mean, I'm, I'm about six miles from the ocean. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, Sheena, I'm, I'm really kind of more of a pool guy than I am right, an ocean but it's, but it's about the air. It's about the ocean breeze. It's amazing. It's so healing. It's it really so, is. Um, people move here from other places in the country. They're like, why do I look so young? And I'm like, because people spend a lot of money to do salt exfoliation on their skin. And here you just have it coming in naturally in the air. So there, there is a, a healing nature to breathing that. Yeah. Uh, when you look up at the stars, there's a lot more stars because places that are near the water tend to have less industry it's for the most part. The so air, it's a whole different healing center a, for you. It's such a different ball game here. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it's almost nauseating how often I go outside and I'm like, oh my God, another beautiful day. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's beautiful. It's, I know it sounds funny, but you almost no. get sick and tired of saying it. No, know? what when I the first time Amazing. I went back to New York in a while, I did the vagina monologues in 20, 2006. And the first two days I was there, I was like, that's it. I'm becoming bi coastal. I'm getting a place here. I miss New York. Oh my God, being on stage here for the first time. By the fourth day, I was like, God, I miss being able to see out. Because in New York, right. you can only see up. That's I'm it. like, I miss seeing out. I miss being able to smell the ocean breeze because you know, New York's right there on two rivers and you can't really feel the water because of the buildings. Not at and all. And then I realized that I will always love New York. It's always going to be special to me. It's always going to be so many childhood memories of going there from New Haven it's when I was a kid. My heart. But my heart. this is my home. And um, yeah. sometimes you have to go away to realize you're in the white place. Yeah. Uh, you got to go back. Like you go back to New York now and you're like, I love it, but yeah. I'm in the right place where I am. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, I went there in April for my birthday. I was there during my birthday, got to see a whole bunch of friends you nice. know, that I hadn't seen since I moved. And I'm going back in September for nice. a week. Yeah. And maybe I'll do that two or three times a year. Sure. And, yeah. you know, and, then, I'll New York my, and, then, I'll, and then I'll recharge my batteries in a different way. Yeah. You yeah. know, in the New Absolutely. York, way, you know. And then I'll we, come back here to my beautiful, quiet condo yep. that I love in the neighborhood that I love, and sit in the hot tub. Sit in the hot tub, exactly. Yeah, right. and you can do you can do my show from the hot tub. You can just put mm. your little camera. That's what I do. I set up my oh. little camera, and I'm like, I could do the show from my car. Um, I think yeah. probably Bill would kill me if I did it from my car, but but I could in a pinch. No, uh, just, the thing I love really about not. your take two name for your show, yeah, is I think it also talks about maybe you know, what's the next phase? Like, what is their take two? Because a lot of um, young actors did have done fantastically interesting things with their lives above and beyond and in addition to staying in the business. Of course. That's like you and your thing. nightclubs. That was your take two, right? Yeah, I did bars, restaurants, and nightclubs. For yeah. 20 years, I did that. Beautiful. And and I loved that phase of my life. It was great. But when you are a television baby, like yeah. I was, essentially, mm -hmm. that never really goes away. Right, sure. That's always going to be in the back of your mind, in the back of your soul, you know, the sure. back of your heart, whatever. And that creativity, if you stifle it for too long, is not a good thing. It's not a healthy thing. You know? I agree. And I um, think that's just having a creative soul. Yeah, yeah. I grew up an actor. And I, I have no urge to do it full time now, mm. um, but every time I take a part and I'm on stage, I'm like, God, I love this more than anything. But then when it ends and I go back to my regular life, I'm like, man, yeah. I love my real life more than anything, you know? Absolutely. So it's, it's okay to love it and not have to pursue it full time. Yeah, It just takes the pressure of it off, but you shouldn't expect for that delicious spiritual wonderment to ever go away because yeah. you're an artist. Yeah, that's exactly right. But I got to tell you, I, I don't have a yearning to be on a sitcom right now. Right. You know? I don't either. I don't have that yearning. 
But I think, honestly, one hour a week where yeah. I get to talk to fun people. Yep. Not fun. Oh, hello. There it oh. goes. Um, I, I think that will, if the word is satiate, is that the right yeah, word? Yeah, sure. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I think that will, you know, quell, you know, and make me happy and feel like I'm still getting my creativity out at the same time, but not not doing it so much where I can enjoy the rest of my life as well. I agree. I think that's very true and, and very important. Um, I think you're wonderful. Will you come and do this with me again? I would love it. And Absolutely. where can everybody find you online, my friend? Okay. So on Facebook, I, I believe it's just Mason Reese. Um, unfortunately, my Instagram account just got hacked and stolen. Oh, no. That I had to create a brand new one, and I've got like no followers right now. But it's right. brand new. It's like a week old. Uh, and that is I am Mason Reese. Beautiful. That's on Instagram. And uh, yeah, Facebook is just Mason Reese. And um, Wonderful. You know, when I start the show, obviously that'll have its own thing. Then you'll have YouTube and TikTok and the yeah, whole yeah. thing. All, all that, all that fun yeah, new wonderful. social media kid, you know, stuff. Thank you for being here, my friend. I oh, love and adore you, you and I'm honored me. to have you here. Thank you for calling me. I really appreciate it. If you miss any of the information about Mason that he was talking about, you can find me at SheenaMetalSpiritual.com. There's a lot about my spiritual practice there. There's a lot about my entertainment life there. And you can learn about all the shows and the wonderful guests that I've had on this show. Also, you can find me on social media everywhere, just at Sheena Metal. I'm on uh, Facebook. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter. You can probably find a really old Pinterest page. There's all kinds of stuff. If you just go to at Sheena Metal, you will find me. Um, until I see you next Friday at 3 o'clock Pacific time, remember these things. Seek peace. Live in love. Lead with kindness. Embrace unity, always work to raise your vibration, and remember that you are love and you are loved. I'm Sheena Metal. This is the Sheena Metal Experience. Thank you, Mason Reese. Thank you, KGRA Digital Broadcasting Network. Right. We'll see you next Friday at 3 o'clock Pacific time. This is the Sheena Metal Experience.